he was thinking about making a war movie. And I said, well, Stanley, you already made Path of Glory. And he said, well, that's, people think of that as an anti-war movie. I want to make a war movie. It is no secret that Stanley Kubrick has always been fascinated by the topic of war. Just by a mere quick look at Kubrick's filmography, one can find out that throughout his career, he had tackled the topic several times. The 1987 masterpiece, Full Metal Jacket, came about after Kubrick had read the novel, The Short Timers. Kubrick then brought along the former war correspondent, Michael Herr, together with Gustav Hasford, to write out the screenplay based on the novel. The film follows a US Marine nicknamed by his peers Joker, who is played by the electrifying Matthew Modine. Following his time in the Vietnam War as we see him undergo his training within Paris Island and afterwards when he goes into the battlefield. Well known for his sharp attention to detail and for his stubborn perfectionism, Full Metal Jacket is full of these little touches. As seen in the first act of the film, in the scene where the recruits recite a slightly altered version of the Rifleman's Creed, Kubrick expertly makes use of cinematography, editing, and mise-en-scene to convey a prominent theme of the film, the changing of use into killers, lacking any real identity. As we see, the recruits are lying in an obvious right-left, right-left, or left-right-left-right pattern. They wear the same bland white uniforms and their bunk beds are aligned with the utmost precision. Even the environment is dull, with bright lights clearly illuminating the room and the walls painted in a dull blank colour. This shows that the recruits have ceased to become themselves, but merely gears within the clockwork known as the army. Notice that throughout this short scene, most of the shots are positioned in a similar framing and angle. This is to show a surreal form of unity between these recruits. Kubrick further enhances this feeling with his signature one-point perspective technique, creating lines which converge onto a single point in the frame. The third shot shows a medium close-up of Joker's face. The framing in this shot is similar to that of the first shot we see of Joker lying down. By focusing closer on Joker, Kubrick, though still using a similar angle, breaks his one-point perspective technique to suggest that Joker still holds his individuality unlike the rest of his fellow recruits. In the fourth shot, Kubrick goes another step over to break his framing by this time changing the framing and the angle entirely. Furthermore, the use of editing to contrast the angles used in the earlier few shots and in this shot further implies that Private Pal does not fit within this clockwork and we see that this is later true when Private Pal fails to cope with his training. This juxtaposition of vastly different types of shots can also be seen throughout the film. Kubrick makes use of long takes, tracking shots, to simulate reality, which contrasts with the many surrealistic scenes where the use of symmetry and the one-point perspective technique creates a subtle, cold, and surreal impression on the viewer as their brains register the mathematical perfection of the shot. Realism is implemented in the film also through sound. For many of the scenes of war lack any music to further emphasize the diegetic sound effects that occur during the wartime, such as the footsteps of the soldiers running or the loud noises of the gun firing at the enemy, thus adding to the realism of the scene. Kubrick also uses diegetic sound effects to disconnect the viewer from the characters, as seen in the helicopter scene where a helicopter gunner shoots down innocent Vietnamese farmers. Joker questions the gunner's humanity, however, his voice is overpowered by the sounds of the helicopter models, turning a potentially dramatic scene into a lackluster one. Kubrick's use of non-diegetic music also immerses the viewer into the time of the Vietnam War, with Kubrick using pieces of popular music hits from that era, such as Johnny Wright's Hello Vietnam or Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made For Walking, from the years of 1955 and 1975, when the Vietnam War was still occurring. However, in the surrealistic scenes, Kubrick will eliminate the realism he has set up by using a haunting film score to further enhance the surrealism in the shot.
Stanley Kubrick makes use of cinematography and sound to convey vastly different moods. This is to further emphasize the theme of duality and contradiction prevalent within the film. How Joker wears two contradictory accessories, a peace button and a helmet with the writing Born to Kill on it, pacifism and savagery, respectively. Despite Fu Mel Jacket's cinematic excellence, it may not be the war film for everyone. Unlike the Vietnam War films released before it, Fu Metal Jacket is fully content with experimenting with narrative structure and film form to embody the film's themes, something the average movie watcher may not be able to understand. The film also does not portray war as neither positive nor negative, and instead revels in its contradictory morality and ambiguity. It distances itself from its own characters and instead observes them from the environment, from the outside. Kubrick does so because he wants us to be merely spectators. He wants us to see war for ourselves and come to our own conclusions. He wants us to observe its violence, brutality, and also its beauty. <laughs>